Hi, I'm Stephen Tallamy, and today something pretty special is happening. Now, if you'd asked me a week ago what I thought I'd be doing today, it certainly wouldn't have been coming here. So on Monday I got a text message asking if I could bunk off work and come to London. Little did I know it was to come to Air Studios. And so today is a shared recording session. So myself and a number of other composers are going to have the opportunity to record three minute piece of music with a string ensemble. I'm Andrea Giordani and welcome to Lindhurst Hall. How are you Air feeling? Studios. How are you feeling? I'm like weird because this is the first time that I'm here, but like it feels like I've already I've, I've already been here and it's such such a beautiful feeling. The, the the energy is so nice and I'm so so excited. I can see. <laughs> and um, I'm just waiting for the first note to be played, so I might cry a little bit. So you're up later. first, aren't you? I'm first, yeah. Oh. I'm ready. Come on. Let's T get over it. Tell us about your piece. How, how, when uh, did you write my it? My piece is called uh, The Capture of Persephone. And who knows something a little bit about Greek uh, tra tragedy. It's about a moment when the god of the underworld, Hades, comes above uh, to, the, to, to the earth and just grabs Persephone and goes down with this with his chariot down to the underworld that's the moment so it's so, pretty yeah. dramatic well yes <laughs> I'm looking forward to it yeah <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Arthur. I'm from well, from Cumbria originally, um, but I'm studying up at Edinburgh College at the moment so I'm for my final year. Fantastic. So, how are you feeling about today? Very excited. Um, quite scared, but uh, yeah, really excited. It's an incredible opportunity. So, what have you written for the band today? So, it's a piece uh, sort of inspired by autumn in general and sort of general feelings of, of melancholy, but building up to a bit more hope at the end. Hey, I'm Chris Belsey. Hi, uh, Chris. How are you doing? Uh, Not bad. <laughs> what are you doing today? Uh, well, out of the blue, I got invited down here to uh, make use of a chamber string orchestra. So uh, I wrote, wrote a three-minute piece and going to record it today at the Winter's Hall at Beer Studios. So, so what's your piece called? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so basically, um, uh, I used a Gaelic translation uh, for basically mixed emotions. Yeah. <laughs> so Come on then, can you do it your best Gaelic? I'm not even going to, <laughs> uh, don't know where to begin. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Keith Theodosio and I'm here at Air Lindhurst Studios. How are you feeling? My home. Of course, yeah. yeah. How are you feeling? Um, nervous. Yeah. Pretty nervous. Obviously first time. Yeah. Um, tell us about your piece. Excited. Yeah, tell us about your piece then. Uh, my piece, April Showers, um, actually fits the setup. Uh, it's just the string section. And it's quite lively, um, pretty classical style, and I'm really looking forward to like hearing it played. Hello. I'm going for a semiconductor. Sorry about that. 
Hi Chris, good to see you. Hey Arthur, nice to meet you. Keith, great to meet you. Right, well, here we are. Got a lovely band. Magnus is the leader. He's a fantastic violinist. Our shop is the cellist. Brilliant. And it should be really good. Have you guys had the chance to record it before? No. Okay, great. Oh, brilliant. Well, then we're in for an exciting day. Yeah. Um, you know, don't you feel like, even if it sounds great the first time, yeah, don't feel like you can't chip it. in. And you, it's your piece, you feel like you have some contribution to make them if you want to talk on the stand yeah, or push it on that, you produce or whatever it is. Yeah, um, I'm here basically if you need any. And if you don't like the way the chalice is playing, if you want them to play it quieter, then it's absolutely fine for you to say so. And they'll, they'll appreciate the, the notes. They like to be guided, really. Um, so, so don't you feel daunted by it? I did a piece yesterday. Um, I did a piece yesterday. And I could have just gone, oh, that's a master, and take one, yeah. but it just got better and better and better. Yeah. There's a bit in the middle where it gets better and better, and then... Oh, uh, yes, yes, <laughs> it's true, it is true. Hi. Good morning, thanks so much for coming. Um, I uh, booked the hall for four days for a job and was promptly fired off it. Alison couldn't sell the time, so I've been kind of messing around in the hall all week, which has been absolutely fantastic. And I thought it'd be a wonderful opportunity to allow some people who've never worked here or with... Uh, a band before um, to uh, play some of their music. So we have six very talented composers from all over the place. One, uh, one composer, Andrea, who's the first up. She's come all the way from Malta. We've got guys from Scotland and uh, locally. So um, I would just really appreciate as much feedback from you, suggestions, um, so that they can enjoy the experience, but understand the maybe the different kind of nuances that you can introduce to their music and fantastic that Ben is going to conduct today. So thanks very much. So before I share some highlights from the recording session itself, I thought I'd walk through a little bit of the piece of music that I wrote. So originally I wrote this piece uh, using um, a chamber strings and piano. Um, you can see here that I use the Oliver Arnold's chamber wave, so you'll definitely hear that influenced in the piece. And then I wrote a uh, piano part using the Noir scoring piano. I'll just play the first few bars of this just so you can get an idea of how it sounded originally. So as you can see, I just played these chords in using the piano uh, block chords. I didn't orchestrate it out into different parts because this is a pre-orchestrated uh, chamber strings section. Um, and then the piano up here again, very simple part. And so I thought this would work quite well as a pure chamber strings uh, piece. So what I did is I took some of the parts that were in the piano um, and orchestrated those into the main string section. And then I took the melody line and gave that to viola. So this is a version of that same project, but now you can see I've orchestrated it out into the different sections. Um, I used chamber strings for this just because the parts would be individual rather than the large block parts that you get in the Olaf Arnold's chamber strings. And I've also used the Spitfire solo strings for the viola part. You can see I've done a bit of automation here, but I didn't do loads because I wasn't trying to make this sound realistic. I just wanted it to sound roughly okay, just so I could gauge that the orchestration itself uh, was working. So you can see I pulled together a rough score here inside of Logic, uh, but luckily we had an orchestrator on the day, Gareth Murphy. Um, he's also a composer and I'll put a link to his profile below. Uh, he took this Logic file, uh, imported it into Sibelius and then properly orchestrated it out. And you can see we've got all the score parts and then the individual uh, instrument parts as well. And in discussion with Gareth, we decided to try to orchestrate out a little bit more explicit instructions on where the swells would start and end uh, within the bars because they weren't going to be simultaneous between each of the sections. You'll see in a moment that I describe that to the orchestra. Stephen. Stephen. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. So um, we've sort of tried to notate it out. These are sort of waves, the sort of background. So we've got a beautiful solo viola. And then we've got these kind of waves and each section kind of will swell together um, but it was sort of so the idea because there's some resolution it's kind of each person is resolving the chord at different points and so that's kind of what we've tried to notate it's probably not easy to see without the whole score but each section is kind of going different parts it sort of doesn't go sort of from bass to high it's sort of 
goes more like this. I see, you're pattern. talking essentially about the crescendos. The crescendos, yeah. yes. And they obviously at the beginning, uh, we've got a, a slower tempo mm. just because they're slightly held and then it will go up tempo, but then those swells are still happening throughout on the other parts and they're sort of sitting behind the viola. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So observe these um, specifics in terms of the, the crescendo, yeah? Yeah, mm. perfect. Great. Together, this is Bob one. So Ben, um, a few things. So I think the tempo needs to be a little bit higher both at the very beginning and also as it gets into the piece. It does change tempo, obviously, at, um, at measure A. Yeah, so that, but it just was a little bit slow. At the very beginning with those waves was sort of beautiful. If you can leave just a little bit of air between each wave so that, it, that you sort of almost come off the note and then it's used to hear a bit of the hall and then it comes back in again. So just a tiny bit of air off. Yeah, yeah. um, and then uh, I think with the uh, viola solo, I think there was a few glissandi in there, which I'd rather just yeah, have yeah. them just I'll both yeah, through. Yeah, through. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, then, and then I think the last note was just a little, we were really slow on the last note of the... It was too slow. It was just, yeah, I think yeah, it yeah. was really um, going down. And then yeah. suggestion here also was to... Soltasto, yeah. Yeah. And you can sort of pull the tempo around as well, so as, as needed, just pull the tempo around. It doesn't need to be measured all the way. So, a lot faster, eh? <clears throat> hey, Ben. I just had a, just a thought, because I think we're doing really well for time. But just for, for Stephen to have an alternate version where maybe um, you guys figure out some, some slight dynamic shifts, it feels very much on one level to me. And I'm wondering whether um, we, you, you know, a bit of soft, a bit of slightly louder and stuff that, that Megan can kind of work around, if you know what I mean. I don't, sorry, it's not very, um, not particularly well, uh, you know, um, illustrated <laughs> note, but do you know what I mean? Okay. So, Steve, do you want to give us some, some guidance through that? I guess from measure A is where we need to start shaping it a little bit, perhaps. Maybe starting a little bit quieter and just sort of building it. Okay. And let's call it piano at the front then. And what about Megan? She's playing out quite a lot there, beautifully, but perhaps she should come down a lot as well. Okay. So we're going to do a big crescendo through 32, is that right? Uh, 32, yeah. And then from, so from, from 41, Stephen, we'll, we'll play piano there, right? Yeah, just take it down a bit more so it's even more, you know, bringing out the sweetness. Um, do you know what? Why don't you do this um, tiny little trance just that measured? With the crescendo going a little faster. Just you, I think. Okay. So with the crescendo um, getting a little faster with the trend. Right? And it should be pretty pretty pointy.
And that's why everyone should write viola solo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was amazing. So these are the session files that I've gotten from Air Studios. They're Pro Tools sessions files. And I want to get these into Logic because I'm much more comfortable working in that environment. I'm going to show you two methods that I've found so far. I'm sure there are plenty of others. And if you've got any ideas, do put a comment below. So the first version of this is going to be piecing together the session files using just the audio files alone. So if we look in here, we've got all of the different audio tracks here. They've all been nicely labeled with the track number and then a take number. So take one, two, etc. So if I just filter here, take one. So these are all the tracks of take one. I'm going to make sure I order that alphabetically. So if we head into Logic, um, I've got a new project open, just a, an empty audio track here. Uh, we'll get rid of that in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I line up uh, position five. Uh, that's going to line up with simply code of one hour. Most recording studios will start at one hour or two hour or something further in the future than zero zero. Um, I'm just going to line that up with bar five just in case it was recorded slightly before that so it imports nicely. Um, we always can mess with that a bit later. So now if we go back to the files, we've got take zero one and I'm just going to drag that into logic. Doesn't really matter where. And I'm going to do create new tracks. I'm going to delete that original audio file because we don't need that now. And what I can now do is I can now do move to recorded position. If that's not the top there, you'll find it down in move to recorded position. And this will snap it back to exactly the time code, uh, which you can see in this case is one hour on the bar five. So that's perfect. So now let's get take two, change our search to 02. And again, make sure we're ordered by name, select all those tracks, drag them in right to the top. And this time we're going to use existing tracks. And again, we're going to move to recorded position. So now I'm going to do that with the other takes. And that's about it. Uh, nothing really much more to it. You can see we've got all of the different tracks here. We've got the different takes along here. And these will play out um, as expected. So this is one method if you don't have Pro Tools, you don't have access to it. Uh, this will get you a long way in terms of having the original recordings. It won't have any edits that have been made in Pro Tools or any other information from the session, but certainly it will get you the raw recordings from the multi-tracks and then you can start editing yourself or, or mixing it around. So the other method that I found is to use an AAF export out of Pro Tools. Now I'm by no means a Pro Tools expert. I've only got it today uh, to load up these session files. Um, but you can see here is the whole session again um, that was recorded at the studios. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to export this as an AAF file and then we're going to import that AAF file into Logic. So I'm going to select all the microphones here from 1 right through to 33. And now I'm going to go to export and as an AAF. Now in this dialog the best options that I found are to not have this Media Composer uh, compatibility. We don't need to be importing this uh, into um, Avid's Media Composer editing tool and we don't want to quantize edits to frame boundaries because we want this sample accurate. So these two we want to turn off and in doing so uh, we can now export our audio. We want to use a WAV format 24 bits so the same as what it was recorded. And then the copy option, there are a few options here. The best option is to use this link to source media because what's going to happen then is we're going to just link the AAF file to those original WAV files that we saw earlier. This is only possible if those WAV files are mono. So that's another reason why I'm not doing that in stereo. If you pick stereo files, it seems like you end up having to use the copy or consolidate options, which um, I didn't really want to use. That creates a lot more media. I don't really want to be working with that. If anybody knows a workaround to that, I think what I might have to do to achieve that would be to create split left and right signals. But again, I don't really care too much about the board mix. So we're going to do link to source media. Click OK. And our publishing options, I'm just going to keep the sequence name as it is. And we're going to save this into the same folder alongside the session files and all those audio clips. Now, if we go back into Logic, I've cleared down the session again, one audio track um, again. Do File, Import, and then we're going to pick the AAF option. And this is the AF we just exported. And you can see that Logic goes very busy importing all the media. 
and you can see there we go we have all of the session information exactly as it was when we looked at it in Pro Tools. Now one thing that we have lost uh, from the Pro Tools session is the nice little markers that were there um, so we could just copy those manually you can do a file and then you can do an export session info as text and then if you just want the markers which is all we need for this uh, we can just export markers this way we could use timecode format so I'm just going to save that alongside everything else and now we have a lovely text file that we can look at and that has all the marker locations that we can then go and add back in if we want to into logic and so just to show a slightly more complex example um, this is from Chris's sessions so you can see these are the original session files the original recordings and then at the end of the session the engineer put together actually two um, edits here and you can see they've come together different um, takes uh, this is because Chris had some sections where he had mutes on and then they would then comp that together with sections without the mutes so you can see these are the uh, different edits here so again exporting those with AAF we're going to be able to retain all this edit information so if we look back in logic here you can see this is the imported AAF and you can see all the crossfades, all the edit points. These are the two different um, edit versions as well. So everything um, is present from the original recordings and so that's a real value um, if you've got some sort of complex editing going on inside the Pro Tools sessions uh, using that AAF or, or asking for an AAF uh, can be really valuable because you can then import that uh, into your DAW and continue from that point. So with all that imported into Logic, this is the final mixed version of the track. So what you can see is I've actually kept most of the levels pretty much the same as they were recorded. I haven't really fiddled with that too much. I really like the sound. Uh, but what I did do is I pulled back these spot microphones. So these were the uh, the microphones right next to the players, um, with the exception, as you can see, of the viola A. So that was the soloist. So that one is brought up, but all of the others are much lower. I did try a few variations of this. This seemed to come out the best in terms of a balance. I wanted a lot of the signal from the uh, main tree and other microphones um, but I also needed a bit of these close microphones so that the viola uh, close mic wasn't sounding completely out of place uh, amongst the ensemble so that seemed to work uh, so in terms of the mix not a huge amount going on here I've got um, a little bit of EQ just rolling off the bottom end of each of the parts um, and there was a little bit of EQ automation as well uh, there was a part where I just wanted to pull down the levels of some of the other viola parts in amongst the main mix uh, so there's just a little bit of surgical EQ that I automated in and out you can see that I have spread out the uh, stereo image of the tree uh, minus 40 plus 40 and then the middle of the tree is dead center um, then I've taken these ribbons which were slightly further out um, those I've gone for minus 45 and uh, plus 45 and you can see I've just got them a little bit wider uh, going out to the sort of outrigger microphones so you can see those ones are going left and right so I wanted to sort of have something that represented the same sort of sound field as you would have seen the mic set up in the hall itself and then for the individual parts again what I've tried to do is move their individual microphone positions to be roughly where they were in the layout uh, so you can see I've got the violins uh, violins two and then violas cellos and bass so I've tried to move all these spot mics and overheads which are all mono uh, into the right stereo position as per the uh, ensemble layout also I made sure that each of these have a fade in and a fade out so there's no clipping between each part um, and then I mix that down into this track here now I wanted to do a bit of noise reduction so you can see here I've also recorded out with the exact mix that I was using some room tone so this is a moment uh, after the fifth recording where it was relatively quiet in the studio so I've used that as my room tone so heading into um, RX this is the original bounced version of it uh, so you can see there's a bit of noise in there in particular there's a lot of noise down in the low frequencies and that's definitely audible uh, so this is the fixed up version of it you can see a lot less going on in the bass end and you can see uh, a lot less sort of hiss and noise going on up in the upper regions but I tried not to go too harsh so you can still I've tried to keep a lot of the high end uh, still present in the signal there was also a bit of sibilance just before the solo viola plays uh, that I wanted to get rid of. Let me just play it with the sibilance and then without. So you can hear a sort of th 
sound. So I got rid of that there. So still try to keep it natural, but just remove some of the early sibilance. And there was also a couple of clicks uh, that I heard in the track as well. So went through and again, all I did there was just very surgically come in, pick a little piece and then do a bit of surgical repair on it, which worked really, really well. I then sent the audio to Simon Fife, who helped me on the mastering of the Patchworks track previously, um, and he put it into Ozone and twiddled about with it. As you can see, a bit of boost on the high end, a little bit of a cut here in the lower end of it, um, a little bit of maximization. Really not a lot going on here um, if you actually watch it play back. Really not a lot of maximizing or anything else going on. I wanted to keep it, again, very, very subtle just to uh, bring out the high end and just uh, compress it a very very small amount but not a lot because I wanted to keep the dynamic range um, as it was recorded. So as you can probably see it was an incredible experience for us all definitely a memory we will cherish forever. Um, I wanted to say a few thank yous uh, first off to Hilary Skews she was the music contractor who hired all the musicians and arranged it all for us. Uh, thank you also to all the musicians what an incredible uh, performance across all of our pieces. I particularly want to thank Megan who played the viola solo on my piece. Ben Foster, uh, he was the conductor, an incredible guy and really, really helped us bring our pieces to life. Uh, John Prestage, the engineer, again, really uh, great setup for us. What, what an incredible uh, crew they have there at Air Studios. So I want to thank everyone at Air Studios, particularly Glenn uh, from security who gave us an um, incredible tour around the facility. I want to say thank you to Robbie Crawford and Lee Kirby uh, for capturing the day for us. And of course, most of all, I want to say a big thank you to Christian Henson. Uh, it really was an incredibly generous gift uh, for all of us. And, uh, you know, this is something that we will cherish forever. So just to reflect on some of my takeaways from the whole experience, uh, one of them was really just collaborating with the musicians. Uh, the suggestion that Hillary made uh, to use Saltasto, which made it a much more delicate playing style, slightly away from the bridge, that really, really brought out a lot of tenderness. And then Ben Foster suggested to do a divisi so that two of the players would play a Saltasto and then one would also do a very gentle trem over it. And that really, really created an amazing effect uh, in the hall. There was also an interesting contrast for me being sat behind the mixing desk and uh, listening to music from that perspective and then going into the hall and hearing the musicians right in front of them. Whilst, of course, the microphones capture so much detail, there's just something incredible to really feel it. My heart was absolutely racing after uh, that final performance where I got to stand in with the musicians and hear them play my piece of music. And the third takeaway for me, and I'm sure you've heard Christian say this before, is that live musicians playing your music makes so much difference. Uh, we were very lucky to see David Arnold. He's based at Air Studios and he generously came down and spent a bit of time talking to us. And he said it's a little bit like the difference between the Mona Lisa as a print. So if you're having a print of the Mona Lisa, that's kind of like your sampled orchestra. Really, really beautiful, uh, incredible. But the real Mona Lisa is when you get real musicians to play in the hall together. And I couldn't agree more. It was an incredibly moving experience to have people play your music and bring all that emotion to the performance. If you'd like to know anything more about the day, then please do leave a comment below. A big thumbs up for everybody who was involved. Please do share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.